What's going on, Shrew Gang? My name is Cam Drip. We're having a great day. In today's video, I'll be doing an update on BlackBerry ticker symbol BB. We're going to go over the intraday chart we're looking at right now. I'm going to bring the overall trend, and then I'll also make sure to bring the Ortex data over and the calls and the puts flow uh, towards the end of the video. So just keep those eyes peeled for that. Uh, right off the bat, so I want to tell you guys one thing. First of all, if anybody's trying to tell you that BB revenue is falling, their operating cash flow isn't looking too hot, know that's FUD and debunk it by telling them to look at the return on equity, debunk it by telling them that their financials are on a slight uptrend. The revenue may be on a slight trend down in particular, but just know that they're still a hair away from meeting expectations every time. So if the expectations are gonna fall, it shouldn't be a big deal that the revenue is falling along with it. So just know that. Second of all, algorithmic selling is in full effect. The only way you can tell the difference between algorithmic selling and regular selling is when you break it down into the order book. So as you can see, anything getting loaded up right now is usually in blocks of 100, but sometimes when it gets hefty, they like to push 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. You can just see in itself, any type of sell orders that are around uh, this bid price, I guess, if you will, is in blocks of a hundred. It's in blocks of a thousand. But when you go over to the buy side of things, of course, there is algorithmic buying as well, but you can see that it's more of just a natural look of things. You know, you don't just have uh, just a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred flowing into it. You have some that are like 94, 106. It's real buying from retailers, but on the selling side of things, know that this is algorithmic selling. Nobody's really selling this stock, man. And the more it bounces around 950, the more it bounces around 960, know that they're building up an even stronger support. So first of all, I'm ecstatic about what happened today because we not only do we get a beautiful consolidation, it's healthy, right? If we were in an extremely strong bullish trend, we'd be bouncing off 23, which we did. We'd be bouncing off 38, which we somewhat did, but we also bounced off of the 50% retracement as well. This just means that it's a healthy run-up and it's a healthy consolidation. We're not in a deep bullish trend. We're not bearish whatsoever. We just had a clean run-up and we had a clean consolidation bounce. So with this being said, they're probably going to try to hit our momentum, especially if it's towards the end of the day. They're probably going to continue to sell the stock in an algorithmic manner to to kind of halt any type of uh, bullish trend coming into the end of the intraday. So uh, we can run up, they're going to reject us. We could run up again, they're going to reject us. But just know that this is what's playing out. So if I break it back into the next month of activity, you can see that something beautiful is also playing out as well. Let me delete this retracement. Um, so a little bit ago, we had a descending resistance, which is also known as just a bearish trend line. We got a clean pop over that. And the day following, we kind of ran up, rejected, and fell right back down. You know, they tried to halt our momentum. The day after that, we had an even crazier push around 7%, and we pushed up and capped out at around 10, 20, 10, 30, if you will. Now, the difference is, is not only did they halt momentum down here, they halted it up here. And the only thing I can tell you is algorithmic selling, man. That's it. These are not humans selling stocks to drop it by a certain amount. Uh, these are algorithmic selling to halt momentum and to make it seem like you're deep in a bearish trend when in all totality if you break it down Charlie Brown you are now entering yourself in to what could be a double bottom. And that was kind of scary in yesterday's video. I was like, we need to hold 965. I gave us two to three different case scenarios that could happen with this falling wedge. But the only one I didn't give, the one that did in fact play out, <laughs> is the longer term double bottom. So everybody was expecting to hold above 960. I was expecting to hold above 960. But the fact that we fell down to 948 this morning, it was just a reassuring bounce. And it caused us to make that neckline down at 948. And it caused us to have this neckline still up here at around $10.27. So that's going to be our ultimatum resistance for this pattern. You know, we make a ton of new patterns in BlackBerry since it's been getting a little bit weird. But the main pattern that I'm seeing right now is I want this double bottom to play out. Now, this is the major difference, right? If you break it into the two hour, the one hour chart, if you will, uh, as you can see, we have a long run down for this consolidation. And you can see that it was just overselling super, super freaking deep into the oversold category based off of nothing but algorithmic selling. And it's dramatized by the FUD that they put out, trickling out the retailers one by one. Now, let me tell you, if you have conviction, congratulations, but just know these FUD articles, if they're not trickling you out, they're gonna trickle somebody else out. So that's why this rundown was a little bit more dramatized you felt super deep into the oversold category and that's what caused that false breakdown. Now this is the big freaking difference, man. You have a run back down to the same exact price range, 948. You bounced off of it this morning, perfectly. But when I break it back into the two hour chart, you can see on the RSI chart, we're above the last dip. This is nothing but a bullish divergence. This just means that the stock price went down while people were still buying the dip and it brings strength. 
ginormous strength, man. This, I'm ecstatic about this because this is a huge bullish signal. You ran back down to test the same range of price, but instead of people getting shaken out, they were ready for it and they bought that dip. So of course today I'm expecting red for the rest of the day. And why am I expecting red for the rest of the day? Because I see bullshit like this in the sell orders. And also I know that they're trying to get us under $10 flat. They maybe even try to get us under 950 to halt momentum and also to get these call options out of the way. So the shrewd gang said on Wednesday, if they do whatever the freak they can to get us under 10, they're going to do it. What are we currently sitting at right now? You know, especially at the end of Friday, we're at 967, whatever they had to do, they did it. And it makes me happy because it's sad and it's pathetic. But if they're down millions and millions of dollars, they're going to do whatever they can to get themselves out of it. Just know that if it was, if it was the retailers in their shoes, they wouldn't give Jack squat and they would be greedy times a million. So it's time for the retailers to be just as greedy as the hedge funds. It's time for us to stick it to the man and it's time for us to bring this momentum into these following days and weeks to come so we can get a nasty push not only has the shrew gang been dealing with this thing for two months straight but i know damn well today i know yesterday throughout this whole week in general the selling pressure has been out of this world guess what this doesn't mean anything to me in the shrew gang other than that the bears are panicking they're panicking they're trying to do whatever the f they can and they're realizing it's not really working too well they dropped us down to 948 they sunk us in the pre-market that like we were expecting and we still got bullish pressure throughout the day. Now my body woke me up really early this morning. It was like four to 5 a.m. But I was extremely happy to see that people bought the dip up in the pre-market. Whoever it was was expecting it, man. Or it might've been all the retailers. So I'm gonna give all of you guys some pauses, some yays. Because everything that's playing against us right now is complete bullshit. So just know that, <laughs> just know that. Let's bring it over to the calls and puts real quick and then we'll bring the Ortex data over to kind of see what we're rocking with for the retailers mindsets and the short sellers mindsets behind the scenes. So yesterday we had everything below the $10 strike in the money. So we were basically at 950 all the way down to four of call options in the money. Of course, every single call option before this has little to no open interest, has little to no volume. The only major one I see is the $8 strike, but it's nothing really too crazy whatsoever. The $10 strike, the 1050 strike as well, has not only been Ivy crushed yesterday, but we had a green day today, but this little red towards the end of the day, also Ivy crushed whatever was left in the worth of these calls. You can still see people picking up 1,200 uh, call options today and 107 call options today to expire today at a worthless price. So basically, Y'all need to smarten up whoever it is behind the scenes buying call options like this because this is nothing but throwing free money to market makers or just big players in the game riding up these call options in mass amounts. Smarten up, man. I get it. The $10 strike was the best and most profitable one to pick for this week, but give yourself time. Go out way more than you need. And yes, pick the $10 strike if you're currently trading at 950 because that's the highest risk tolerance you can have. And that's the highest chance you will end up making profit in the option. Anything else running away from the current price you're at makes it more of a gamble. Any strike price you go after the 10 is basically just having all of the Greeks playing against you, or at least playing against you more than you would if you pick the $10 strike for this week. If you go out months and months and months and months, first of all, you can always sell the call option early. And second of all, some of the Greeks can actually play with you rather than against you. So just know that, man. Play smart, play chestnut checkers, dog. Now talk about short sellers being weary, man. So yesterday we were expecting a little bit of a pop in the shares on loan because we had more borrowed than returned. However, today it's completely flip-flopped. You see more returned than borrowed. A 400K net difference is gonna bring us down to around 33.2, 33.3 on Monday. So it's not really much of a change in the shares on loan, but whoever averaged up a couple days ago, uh, there's other people that had different things in mind and they covered those shares and two days later, they're returning them today. You get around 250K borrowed, so you're gonna get a 410,000 net difference. Now this is only 1.2% and that short interest percentage change because it seems like a lot, 410,000, but if you break it down with the 33.7 million uh, total shares on loan, it really doesn't mean jack squat. You see utilization tickling 17%. It's crazy because it is slowly but surely starting to rise, but this is a good thing. You know, it gets scary, it gets hefty. The short selling is starting to rise, the utilization is starting to rise, everything is gonna start rising with it, like the short interest percentage as well. Whoever is the short sellers and Blackberry's float is either greedy as F or they're typically stuck in their short position. I mean, 
why would anybody pick short shares up at around 950 in stock price if that's the lowest we've tickled in the past two months, right? It doesn't make any sense. Take it at face value. And this just means that there's people under 950 that are trying to average up to get as close to 950 as they freaking can. Now, let me tell you this one thing. This does bring selling pressure. It brings more FUD. It brings more algorithmic selling. It brings shills under the radar to become bearish as well because they start listening to the financial media too. Don't buy the stock, sell your stock, right? That's all they're trying to get you to do, not to buy and to sell. Because when you do buy and you hold, you get stuff like this, right? You get a nice old nasty old looking bull flag in the middle of the day. You get a run back down for that consolidation bounce and you're on your way to test some of these last highs. That's simply what happens, you know? If we run up above 10, whoever's stuck in Blackberry's float is not only F, they're gonna continue to do two things. They're gonna cover, it's gonna cause a massive short squeeze or they're gonna average up, run that, run and chase the price up until they get forced to cover and we squeeze the living F out of them at a higher price. So whatever's playing out behind the scenes is looking very beautiful in our favor. We just have to be able to see through the BS and we've been doing such a great job at it, man. So I'm gonna give you all some fist bumps for real. Just know nothing has really changed behind the scenes. We had a nasty old nasty false breakdown today, but it was nothing but setting us up for a beautiful double bottom formation. We just have to make sure the continuation is still there. So without any further ado, if you can like, share, subscribe, hit that bell as well, it'll help me out, it'll help you out as well. More people will be hopping into the streams, seeing the momentum behind BlackBerry as of right now, seeing the growth potential behind their stock at such a cheap price, man. If you wanna go follow my Twitter, it's all the way on that side of the screen. I post uh, almost daily the things happening around BlackBerry behind the scenes as well when it comes to news and articles. And I love to debunk FUD, man. That's what I love to do. I love to debunk these Seeking Alpha articles because they're nothing but a huge pile of baloney. So, hey, y'all stay safe out there, man. Have a great weekend. Just know we're setting ourselves up for a nice volatile push next week. We just have to make sure the momentum is there. Love your stock debunk the shills, debunk the FUD, man. Whoever is out here lying about BlackBerry never shows TA, never does anything whatsoever to support their claims. So you need to be the one to do that, man. So when other people see that ish, they don't get trickled out as well. Shrew Gang, I'll catch up boy as well. Peace out. Uh... Shrew Gang.